Shane, man, how's the family? How's New York? How's life treating you? Uh, family's good. New York is good right now because we're in the great months of New York. But uh, aside from these couple months, New York fucking sucks. <laughs> so um, I'm enjoying it now. Every, every, every uh, summer and springtime it gets me. I'm like, you know what? It's kind of a nice place to live. Fall comes and it gets cold within a couple – I mean, by September, it's getting cold. And then I'm like, damn, it got me again. I'm stuck here for another fucking winter. <laughs> you might have to make a trip down to Miami soon, huh, after the fight? Seriously. Seriously. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, um, let's jump back to November, man. You picked up a, a huge win over Billy Q, considered one of the fights of the year. You were coming off back-to-back -back losses. You know, how important was that victory in the grand scheme of things, you know, for your career? For sure. It was a, all, all the... All the weight of the world was on my shoulders. I was going into that one. Um, in my mind, it was win or, or, or go home. There was no other. There's no plan B. It was kill or be killed. I had to win that one. If I if I lost that one, I would have been like, you know what? I, I three three in a row. I mentally I couldn't handle that. I, I'm I'm a I'm a winner. I'm obsessed with winning. If we're playing a game of ticket, I toe on a win. Um, to to lose two in a row, that's something that I care so much about and so passionate about. It meant a lot to me. So having that pressure on me. It, the weight of the world came off my shoulders when I got my hand raised that, that night. Do you do you feel like you put more pressure on yourself compared to anybody else? You know, because when you're coming off like back to back losses in this sport, you know, what I mean, people will jump off the bandwagon. The doubters will come out. You know, fans turn into haters. You know, it happens all the yeah. time. Um, does it drive you? Do you not pay attention to it? What's what's going on? I don't really care too much about that. I, I put a pressure on myself no matter if I'm on a win streak or a lose streak. I mean, that was the first time I was ever on a losing streak, so it felt a little bit different, but the pressure to win is always there, and the pressure to perform, and not just not just win, not just skate by with this, get my hand raised. I want to win, and I want to win emphatically every single time. I, I, I pride myself in, in being a fun fighter to watch and an exciting fighter to watch, but I also pride myself in being a finisher. Before I was in the UFC, I was 7-0 and with a, all seven finishes, and then I started racking up some decisions in the UFC, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, this is kind of uh, irking me a little bit. I don't want any more fucking decisions, man. I definitely don't want any more fight of the nights. Everybody knows me for the fight of the night guy. I, I don't want to be known as that guy. I want to be known as a performance of the night guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, there's that, like, struggle of, like, am I, do I want to be an exciting fighter or do I want to win these fights? You know what I mean? Because some people get lost in the excitement, right? Yeah, yeah, I definitely have. my the, the, well, Me and Emmett fighting, that was, like, the most fun I ever had in a fight ever. I was like, this is just getting, this is fun. This is actually a good time. But um, I got to step back from that and I got to, I got to, focus more on on not just winning but fuck it no so not just not just getting my hand raised but getting the job done like completely before that before the referee before that final bell goes off i want the referee to stop the fight you know uh, ahead of that fight ahead of the billy q fight you also was coming off that weird stoppage against uh edson barbosa did that ever yeah. like creep into your mind ahead of that fight the possibility of that happening again no never not even uh, not even did, didn't even cross my mind, honestly. It, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was just, it was just a freak fucking thing. It really was where uh, I remember it. It wasn't like I was like, oh, my God, what did I get hit with? What I remember I was like, I remember I got hit, and I remember going up and down, and I was like, my legs are starting to give out. And then I was like, oh, my legs are off. What the fuck? It was just a, a weird thing. Um, we'll make sure it never happens again. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Because, you know, that can have an, uh, a psychological effect on certain yeah, people. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that fucking with some fighters, but I think I'm built different, honestly. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. you are built different. If you're not even thinking about stuff like that, because for a regular person, that would be like the number one concern. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, I take my brain health very seriously. I went to two neurologists after that. I didn't spar for a while just to be extra safe, extra cautious. I actually didn't even, both doctors that saw me, they said, there's no signs of a concussion, but we're going to treat it like it's a concussion anyway, and just no contact. And I said, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but... I, I, I take that very seriously. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that, man, because, yeah. you know, yeah. some fighters, they, they'll say one thing yeah. and they'll do another. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, um, you know, I saw that at the beginning of this year, you it was rough for you due to the yeah. due to COVID and, and some other health issues. What, what was the first couple of months like in 2022? Terrible. It was terrible. It was, it, was a, it was a shitty way to end the year and then a shitty way to start the year because right after, um, I mean, Dece the beginning of December, I got the flu. My brother's girlfriend had it, and then a couple of my other friends had it, and I was like, fuck, I'm feeling sick. And I was like, I don't think it's COVID. I, it feels way worse than COVID, actually. It was the first time I ever had the flu in my life. Felt like absolute sh dog shit for four days. That went away. A week later, I got a stomach virus. Just bad. My, my daughter ended up throwing, throwing up nine times. My wife picked, puked three times during the night. It was 
my whole house had a stomach virus. That only lasted two days, but man, I was fucked up from that. Then two weeks after that, I get COVID, and I actually wasn't even that sick. I was like, oh fuck, man, I, I got the I got the vid. I'm, I got it. My wife had it. My, my my youngest daughter had it, and they were both really sick. I wasn't that sick. It's my second time having it. I go. I fast forward. I, I test negative. It only lasted four days. Um, test negative. I get back to training, and I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Like we're just warming up in the beginning of class, and I'm like, I'm fucking tired noticeably tired. I wear the polar heart rate monitor for everything I do, for, especially for my training. And I'm I'm like jumping rope or shadow boxing and I'm, I'm in the yellow and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And that honestly lasted from January to probably around mid March where I was like, the, the time of the January was a wash. I couldn't really do anything. It was just more technical training and drilling. Didn't spar, didn't really get a chance to, to go hard. I would go live. I, I could do everything, which is a frustrating part. I could do anything, but I can only do it for about 30 seconds. And so I was like gassed. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Driving me nuts. It was a mental, a mental fuck. But then mid-March, I started getting better. And then uh, actually when I flew out to help Emmett with his camp for the, the cater fight, that's when I noticed. I was like, oh, okay, it, I'm, I'm 100 set back. I'm good. You said you were doing mostly drilling. It must have benefited you, man, just drilling. Because some people yeah. get lost in sparring and, and they don't yes, want to yeah. drill anymore. Yes, yes. And that's exactly how I was looking at it. It was, it was It's a mental fuck, but I was trying to find a silver lining in it. I was like... I mean, at least I can drill still. I know I can't go too crazy and go too hard, but I can just focus on fundamentals and, and just techniques and, and picking up different shit. So that's all I did for the entire month of January and most of February. And you said uh, you you went out to California, you and your brother. You know, I talked to Josh about that. And uh, how was it How was it going out there, and how did you benefit from that experience? It, it was awesome, man. It was, a, it was a great experience. It was one of those things where I was like, when they first gave me the offer, I was like, ah, man, this is kind of weird, but... I was like, it's a great opportunity. How could I say no? Um, get different looks, get different uh, di different bodies to train with, different coaches that see different things. I was like, why? it can't possibly hurt. We fought already, so I was like, yeah, let's fucking do it. And then um, the first day we get there, it was just weird how uh, comfortable me and me and Josh were. My brother said it. He was like, the first day we go to his, he invites us over to his house for, for dinner. And I was like, oh, I don't know how that's going to be. That might be a little bit awkward. I mean, I, we just got here, and we we'll, he did one workout. I was going to go to his house for dinner. I was like, I'm not going to be rude, though. I'm going to go for sure. He was being super friendly. And I was like, yeah, we'll go. And we get there, and he's doing a bunch of the UFC um, interviews and whatnot. And so it's just me, his wife, and his two friends. And I'm just like, this could be awkward. But it's weird that it's not awkward at all. They were so nice, so friendly. And then Josh comes out, and then it was it was the weirdest thing. My brother said it. He's like, it feels like we've known this guy for, like, for years. It feels so comfortable. We're, like, in his house chilling with his friends and his family and it, it doesn't even feel uncomfortable i was like yeah man it, 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 it was it was weird we had so much in common it was a it was a great experience i could definitely consider him a friend right now yeah he said the same exact things about you and uh and then you made a connection with team alpha man like there's a lot of guys you could train with out there a lot of you know 45ers i i, I most of my training was with with emmett but i did get to go with some other bodies but uh Everyone was super cool, man. No, no egos, nothing like that. You know, what I mean, you walk into a new gym and you got a target on your back. I mean, being in the UFC, everyone like you go into. I, I, every time I go on vacation, I'm trying to go train, and uh, everyone usually tries to go after the, the guys in the UFC to try to try to see if they can get one over on him. So, n no vibes like that. It was it was super cool, super chill. Everyone was was awesome. Great. And did you find out about the Jordan matchup during your trip to California? It seemed like it. The day before I went to California. My manager asked, he was like, oh, they want you to fight uh, International Fight Week uh, against Jordan. I was like, I'm going, I'm getting on a plane like in 12 hours to go out. I was like, let me just take this 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 week as a, as a fight camp week, see how I feel. And then we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see after that. And I was like, but July 2nd is, is real soon, bro. I was like, that's in like a month and a half. I was like, I, I don't know about that. He's like, all right, no, just go to California, see how you feel and when you come back. And they started announcing the fight that I was fighting him in uh, – Paris, I think, mm -hmm. was the first report, and I'm I'm out there. I'm in California. I'm like, oh, guess I'm fighting. I remember showing up, Josh. I'm like, I guess I got to fight. I, news to me. I, I guess they think that I'm going to Paris. To I think it's in Paris, right? I think they're going. I'm going to Paris to uh to fight Jordan. I was like, they're bugging for that one. Definitely not doing that. <laughs> and it got reported that I was fighting him July 2nd in Fight Week, and I was uh, International Fight Week, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? My manager's like, don't worry about it, man. We'll figure it out when you get back. Just have a good time, time training, and we'll, we'll talk to you when you get back. Do you ever wonder, like, where these reports come from? Because you're the one that should know about this before anybody else. Yeah, man. I, I, it, it went, like, viral. I was getting <laughs> tagged in so much. I was getting a bunch of texts from a bunch of different reporters and stuff, and I'm just like, guys, I'm just trying to focus on what I'm doing now. Yeah. I was like, let me just get my, my, my training in right now. You guys are asking me about 
a fight that I didn't even accept officially yet. And I, I do like the matchup, but I was like, let me just do what I'm doing. Yeah, there's, I don't know. It's it's weird sometimes that fighters don't yeah. know that they're fighting. That's just <laughs> odd to me. It's very weird. You're right. You're right. It's very weird. But, you know, with the Jordan matchup, of course, you know what I mean? Like, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's just as exciting as the Billy Q matchup. But when you're coming off a win and you're ranked, did you expect yeah. somebody in the top 15? Oh, of course, 100% I expected that. I fully expected that. Uh, I had no expectation of anyone other than someone in, inside the top 15. So it was a little bit of a surprise, but then I was like, I don't really like it because it's, it's a, not a lose-lose, but it's because any, any opportunity, doesn't matter who you fight in the UFC. You, you, you have a highlight reel finish. It doesn't matter if you're fighting Joe Schmo. It's, if it's in the UFC, it makes ESPN's top 10, and it, it, it's a big deal. So um, at the end of the day, it is what it is. He's not ranked, but I still do like the matchup stylistically. So I accept it. Yeah, well, you're not the only one that likes the matchup. Everybody likes yeah. the matchup. Like yeah. you said, yeah. when they announced it, people are tagging you and that texting yeah. you. Of course, the reason why is because it's a crazy matchup. He brings the heat. You bring the fire. What do you see, though, in his skill set that makes this fight very intriguing? Oh, man, he's a kickboxer. He has, he's never even gone for a takedown in any of his fights. So um, he's got most of his fights are finishes. Uh, look at the way I fight. Everybody knows the way I fight. Everybody knows when you get Shane Burgos in a fight, you know exactly what you're going to get. When it comes to my forward pressure, my, my stand-up, my body shots, um, my, my clean striking, and um, you put us two together, it's it's a fight that it can't be won. It's impossible. Yeah, that, that minimal threat of wrestling from Jordan. how does that play into how you approach this fight? Um, yeah, I don't expect him to go for a takedown, but I mean, if he does, I, I'm more than ready for it. Uh, that would be kind of, I think it would be funny if he went for a takedown. It's like, oh, all right, there we go. I didn't expect that. So I mean, please, Jordan, go go for some takedowns. That that would be uh that'd be that'd be awesome. But I I don't see him going for any takedowns. Maybe I'll go for a takedown. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. You know, what I mean, you never know what's gonna happen. You know, what I mean, a lot of people expect something, but then something like unexpected yep. happens. I love it. I love when something yeah. and like when um Gustafsson took down John Jones. Remember, John Jones had like a hundred percent takedown yeah. defense, yeah. and nobody expected yeah. that takedown yeah, so to happen. Got no wrestling game. <laughs> <laughs> expect that either. <laughs> exactly um did you do all your training camp at tiger showman yeah yep yep all right. basically did the first week of my camp out in california and then mm -hmm. the rest picked right back up as soon as i got back mm -hmm. so it's been like an eight week camp so it's a perfect amount of time yeah and, and i keep hearing about your brother man and he just got signed with first round you know yeah. just like yourself um ryan man is he a big part of every camp yeah yeah um he he lives about 15 minutes away from me and uh, every morning he drives to my house, then I drive both of us to the gym. So, I mean, he, I'm not, I see him five, six times a week at least. Yeah, so he's, he's definitely a big part of my camp. Not necessarily a body to go with, but he's just always with me. He's, he's always training. Anything I'm doing, training-related, he's right there doing it with me. That's great, man. And uh, yeah. what do you see, man, him? How long do you think it will take for him to get into the UFC? Well, the, the sky is the absolute limit for him. He's, And I'm not just saying it's my brother. Uh, I really... I'm not the only one who thinks this. Uh, the coaches, our teammates, we all think very highly of him. He's got phenomenal MMA wrestling, uh, phenomenal jiu-jitsu ground and pound. is great. Uh, his striking is super clean. He's so explosive. He's so fast. He doesn't really have holes in this game anywhere, and he's only 20 years old. He's going to be 21 in a couple, I think, maybe a, a week or two. Um, it, it, the sky is absolutely I mean, how, how long does it take for him to get there? I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was there within two years, I'd say, max. It, it just depends on how that's really what it depends on yeah yeah man i'm i'm waiting you know what i mean whenever like a brother comes up or a sister or whatever or a relative you know what i mean comes up and you're very interested to see like how good yeah. they are you yes. know what i mean are they are they are they similar in style you know what i mean because it yeah, could no, be not at all yeah that's what's wild right it's like you guys are brothers but you guys have different yeah. styles of fighting completely different styles if you watch him like a lot of times like he'll show wrestling techniques to, to the entire team because everyone knows how good his mma wrestling is the way he goes from striking to his takedowns is it's really nice. Beautiful. And, you know, you and Jordan, of course, inside the cage, guaranteed fireworks. But what does it look like in your eyes? You know, how do you see yourself getting that win? Yeah, beautiful violence. I think Cub Swanson said it. I, said, I, I love that. Beautiful violence. I, from the first belt to the last belt, I'll be in his face. He knows that. And um, he's going to break. I, my, my pressure, I think it's going to be too much for him. And, I, and I'm going to break him before that before the last belt. I'm getting the finish this time. All right. And, and I heard that you're, you're fighting out your contract with this fight against Jordan. But correct yes. me if I'm wrong. That's this is not the first time you've done this. Um, 
is this is the second time you've done this like yeah, fighting yeah, out your yeah. contract so it's not like yeah. something new and i feel like now it's not a big deal yeah. that fighters are fighting out their contracts yeah. right yep so it's uh, definitely more common it's funny the last time i was in this position i was fighting a southpaw he's another southpaw i was fighting in uh madison square guard which is in new york now I'm fighting in elmont new york so it's funny the stars are aligning for another big finish here another big contract coming up yeah yeah for sure man so you know all this like talk of like the stakes are high the stakes are always high it's yeah. just that you know you're in a different position right yep I, i'm 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 making them higher right yeah. by by fighting the contract i'm putting all i'm betting on me you know, i'm putting all all my chips on red mm -hmm. let it roll and you and you feel like you're at your best in that position yeah I, I, the, when, when the when the lights are the brightest and uh, mm -hmm. i feel that that in the corner that, that backed up feeling I, I i love that and you know you're fighting in new york so it's always a, a good time six and oh new york gonna be seven and <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty nuts man being yeah. undefeated in your hometown um and uh one last question man volkanovsky he faces holloway again for the third time if he wins it looks like he might jump up to lightweight you know what i mean it seems like the ufc yeah. might be you know considering and that and, and fighting for the yeah. title do you like the idea of a champion fighting in two divisions? If there's no clear-cut number one contender at, at the division that he's at, then then I'm cool with that. It makes it makes sense. It makes sense for business. It makes sense to let 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 a let a new challenger develop. Um, there's no clear-cut number one contender, you can say, I guess. But I feel like Emmett's on a huge fight, uh, a huge winning winning streak right now, and I feel like that's been, that's new blood in the division. He just had a great fight with with Cater, him versus the, the winner of Holloway and. Uh, and um, Volkanovski, it, just, it makes sense to me. So I don't think that there needs to be uh, a jump up to lightweight right now. Why not just fight Emmett? It, may, it makes sense. He's ranked number four right now, and you've beaten all the other guys. So why not do that? It's a it's a great fight too. If you look at it on paper, like whether he fights Volk, whether whether Volkanovski or Holloway wins, them versus Emmett is it, it's going to be a fucking awesome fight. Yeah, I agree. I think Emmett is the clear cut number one man. He's earned that spot. Like he's been doing it for a long yeah, so, time. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's saying there's no clear cut number one, but I'm like, just because he doesn't have the, the 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 followers on Instagram or the, or, the, or the flashy, brash, fucking wearing the Gucci glasses and shit, that doesn't mean he's not a fucking. That doesn't mean he's not the number one contender. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that does not mean it. But you know, like if Volkanovski does go up to lightweight, do you see him doing? How do you see him doing against like a Oliveira or a Makachev? Oh, it's fucking Oliveira is red hot right now, man. So that is, it's almost impossible to pick against him in his own weight class. But Volkanovski is looking fucking awesome in his last couple fights too. It, it, I just, it's, it's hard to pick against Oliveira if 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 Volkanovski was going to go up. He's got a huge size advantage on him too. So I, I would lean towards towards um, Oliveira, but. Fuck, Volkanovski is a motherfucker too. So, and also, I think it helps Volkanovski if if he does beat Holloway, that the the lightweight title is vacant as well. That's true. Yeah, I completely forgot about. It. I completely forgot. There's no lightweight champion right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, That's pretty wild. Yeah, we'll see how the cards play out, man. But it, there's a yeah. lot that rides on that fight. I think uh, yes. Volkanovski and Holloway. Um, yes, I, completely different fight too. Like the first two fights were really close, but. Uh, the way um, Volkanovski has been looking lately, I think he looks like a completely different fighter. So I think this fight is brand new, in my opinion. July 16th, man. UFC Long Island. Shane Burgos is back in action. Nobody misses a Shane Burgos fight, man. You know that. Open the card. First fight of the night. I'm going to exactly what I'm fighting. Then I'll be home back uh, back here eating some ice cream with my daughter. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much, Shane, man. Always good uh, catching up. And, uh, yeah, all the best in the fight. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Talk to you after.